Hey guys, MovieFan356 here, continuing Halloween Horror Month with my Scream series reviews. Today we're talking about Scream 2. It came out in 1997, yes, just one year after Scream. And uh, once again directed by Wes Craven, and once again starring Nev Campbell, Courtney Cox, and David Arquette. But you also get newcomers in here like Jerry O'Connell, Timothy Oliphant, Laurie Metcalf, uh, Sarah Michelle Gellar, um... Yeah, you, you just get a whole bunch of people in this movie. Jamie Kennedy is returning. Now, the plot of Scream 2 is it's about a year or so later. And um, Sydney's now in college and Randy's in college. And, um, you know, there is now... It's opening weekend of a movie called Stab, which is based on the events of the first movie. Um, and someone's going around killing off these college students, um, and trying to get to Sydney again. That, that's the plot of the movie. The plot's pretty simple. Um, now, what I think of Scream 2 is, for me, I like this one just as much as the first one. I know a lot of people don't like Scream 2 for some reason. I don't really understand the hate for Scream 2. Is it as good as... Uh, is it better than the first movie? No. To me, it's on par. I, I think it's at a, the same level for uh, enjoyment-wise. But, uh, yeah, people don't seem to like this one too much. At least most people I've talked to don't don't care for it. Um, let's talk about the characters. The survivors from the first movie, Dewey, Sydney, Gale, and Randy. Um, they're all great. Um... Gail Courtney Cox, this is the hottest she's ever looked was in this movie right here. Oh my god. I would I would do things to her that are illegal in 49 states. Um, yeah. Uh, Nev Campbell, she's a lot smarter in this one, you know. She got caller ID because she keeps getting prank calls and she's being very careful. Because uh, once, once these killings start, she's dating Jerry O'Connell's character named Derek. And once these killings start... She kind of wants to keep her distance from him. And uh, so she's a lot smarter this time around, as she should be. Dewey is the same old Dewey. He doesn't really change much. He's more mature about the whole Gale situation. He's like, look, you're kind of a bitch. I'm just here to help Sid. And if you want to help, that's fine. But if not, if you just want a story, stay out of the way kind of, kind of thing. Um, so Dewey's more mature while still staying the same old Dewey, if that makes sense. Jamie Kennedy, still the same Randy. Uh, he's the movie geek who's trying to get the girl. And, uh, yeah, he, he he's, uh, he's trying to explain the rules of the sequel in this one. Let's talk about, which I'll, I'll talk about the rules of the sequel in case you guys don't know. Um, <coughs> but the new characters, like I said, Jerry O'Connell's playing Derek, which is Sydney's boyfriend in the movie. And he's actually a nice guy, you know, when we've... In the first one with Billy, we knew that, you know, something was off with Billy from the beginning. I mean, it was whatever. Uh, I never really saw her and Billy and, you know, ended up together forever kind of thing. But Derek is actually a good guy. Apparently, he's, you know, studying med 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 uh, he's studying medicine and, you know... And he's really caring for Sydney. He's trying to keep her safe. He wants to protect her. Um, so, you know, I've always liked the character of Derek. Um, and I think Jerry O'Connell does a good job in this movie portraying Derek. Um, let's see, who else is in this movie? Jada Pinkett Smith. The movie starts off with Jada Pinkett Smith and Omar Epps in the movie theater going to the premiere of Stab. And uh, they're talking about... Um, you know, how, you know, nobody wants to go see white girls do this and white girls do that. And what does this have to do with the plot of the story? Her being butt-ass naked and all kinds of shit. This stereotypical uh, black stuff that they do in movie movie theaters now. As, as obviously, I don't know for, I don't know how true that is or not. Um, but yeah. Uh, the opening scene I found to be fun and entertaining. Scary and creeped out? No. Not like the first one. The first one was scary and creeps me out. This one was fun. I have fun with this one, you know, because this is a true story. I'm going to kind of go off topic for a second here. 
I was too young when Scream came out to go see it in the theater. Um, but when Scream 4 came out in 2011, I was so excited to see it, I wanted to recreate the stab premiere from Scream 2. With, without the murdering, murdering, of course. I'm not a psychopath. Um, but uh, I wanted to recreate that by putting on the ghost face mask and the ghost face costume and just sitting there enjoying the movie, having fun, you know, jumping out of my seat like, yeah, yeah, that's what I wanted to do. I was, you know, I went to the premiere of it, uh, so I was kind of hoping that there would be at least one or two other people that did the same thing. I was the only motherfucker in that theater who did that thing, so, you know, that's just unrealistic right there. I know that from experience. But anyway, back to Scream 2. Um, the opening kill with Omar Epps was okay. I mean, I don't hate it. It, it is like, oh, that's well, whatever. But now every time I watch Scream 2, I always envision Scary Movie. Instead of, you know, the knife going through his ear when he's leaning up against uh, the bathroom stall. Uh, I always envision, you know, Scary Movie with the penis going through his ear. So uh, I, I, I can't take that part seriously anymore. Thanks a lot, Wayne's Brothers. Um, as for Jada Pinkett Smith, you know, she's yelling at the screen. And she thinks her boyfriend comes back wearing the ghost face mask. She thinks it's her boyfriend. And he stabs her. He starts killing her right then and there in front of everybody. And they all think it's stunt. It's, you know, part of the show kind of thing. And uh, I've always admired the fact. Plus, I don't really like Jada Pinkett Smith at all, to be honest with you. Uh, so, you know, I was glad to see her die so quickly. Um, you know, uh, so yeah. The, the opening kill was fun and entertaining. Uh but it wasn't as scary and creepy like, like the first one was. Who else can we talk about? Sarah Michelle Gellar is playing Cece in the film. Very minor role. Uh, you know, that's the thing about these movies. They headlined Drew Barrymore for the first movie. Like, she was going to be the star. And she ends up getting killed in the first ten minutes. Which is cool. Leaving the audience going, oh, if they killed her off in the first ten minutes, I don't, what the fuck am I in for kind of thing. Smart. They kind of did the same thing with Sarah Michelle Gellar. They uh, promoted her like she was going to be one of the stars of the film, and she gets killed about maybe a half hour in, if that. Um, so, you know, I wanted to see more Sarah Michelle Gellar in the movie because I do like her, at least in the 90s I did. Um, you know, this is during her Buffy days, so when she was first starting out on Buffy. So I would have liked to see more Sarah Michelle Gellar, but I'm fine with it. That kill is probably my favorite scene in the whole movie, to be honest with you, is the Sarah Michelle Gellar scene, uh, where she's in the sorority house and Ghostface calls her, and all that. That's probably my favorite scene of the whole movie. Um, then we have Mickey, played by Timothy Oliphant in the film, who is, he's dating Sydney's roommate, Hallie, in the film, which I don't know the actress's name off the top of my head right now, I apologize, but... I'll, I'll get to Hallie in a minute. He's dating Hallie, and, uh, you know, he's kind of just not there. He's there for a couple scenes, you know, trying to be kind of like... I always wonder, was he trying to be like the stew? Was he trying to be the stew of Scream 2? Kind of just cracking jokes, a more lighthearted kind, kind of thing. Um, but he was in it a lot less than I was expecting. I'm like, ah, he's not really there too much. Um... Hallie, Sid's roommate, I don't really know the actress's name, like I like I said already. I thought the character was okay, you know, but she's always trying to get Sidney to party, and Sidney's like, no, look, I just don't feel like it tonight, and she's like, look, you need to get off your ass, come party with me. I'm like, uh, this is kind of reminding me of the Brandy character, uh, the, the character that Brandy played, and I still know what she did last summer, it's who she reminded me of, but more nicer. More nicer. And not as selfish. Uh, but I, I like the character of Hallie. Uh, Liv Schreiber, I should probably mention this is in this movie, he's playing Cotton Weary, the guy who was accused of killing Sis and his mom but was then released after the events of the first movie. And uh, I like Liv Schreiber as an actor, and I really, really like him in this movie. Uh, I think he's creepy, he's got that, he's got a motive. So it kind of makes you wondering, like, oh, is he the killer now? Is he pissed off? Because he's trying to get interviews and, you know, he's trying to get famous off of 
this terrible tragedy. And Sydney's like, no, look, between the movie and the book, people know the truth. I don't. We don't need to do all this extra publicity. And he gets pissed off. So we're like, okay, he's pissed off. He's got there's there's a mystery to him. I like the character of Cotton Weir in this film. Um, Laurie Metcalf as Debbie Salt in the film is you know she's okay. I don't hate the actress. I think she's fine. Um, but she is a little bit over the top in in, in this movie. She's kind of bugging the shit out of Gail, which I kind of like uh, a little bit. It, you know, Gail's always getting on everybody's nerves, but you got Debbie Salt here getting on Gail's nerves a little bit. So, you know, it was cool to see a little reverse, you know, thing there. Uh, but, you know, her character was kind of over the top a little bit. And the rules of the sequel, I want to mention this before we get to the killers. Uh, the rules of the sequel... Because I always got to, uh, I always love this shit. All the rules of scary movies and shit. Rules of the sequel. Number one, the body count is always bigger. Is the body count bigger in this movie? Yeah. Number two, the death scenes are always much more elaborate. More blood, more gore. Carnage, candy. Your core audience just expects it. Um, is there that? Yeah, it's. I I would say it's more, a little bit more brutal, but not by much. Uh. And the last one is, well, I'll talk about the last rule in a minute here, but Randy, uh, spoiler alert, Randy dies in this film. And his, you know, it looks like it's pretty brutal. We don't really see it too much. It's in a van. But once they open that van door, you can see how brutal the killer went on Randy. And, you know, okay, I, the Sarah Michelle Gellar scene is my favorite kill in the movie, but Randy talking on the phone with Ghostface outside while Dewey and Gale are trying to um, find the killer, that's probably my favorite scene, but the Sarah Michelle Gellar uh, scene is probably my favorite kill in the film. So that, that's what I want to go with. Um, the killers of the film... Oh, and number three. Never ever assume the killer is dead. And uh, I like the whole conversation between him and Dewey right there. The killers of the film, I'm trying to get through this as much as I can. These are actually long movies. Um, they're like two hours. Like, like two hours. They're, they're, little, they're long movies. The killers are Mickey, uh, played by Timothy Oliphant, which I like the character of Mickey, but I never really understood, you know, why he was a killer. I mean, they kind of explained it a little bit. Because he wants to be famous, I guess. And he wants to get caught. And I'm like, uh, his motive is weak. I like him a little bit. I like that he was a killer. Because I'm like, okay, it was kind of obvious. But, you know, it's still fun to watch. The reveal is fun to watch. Uh, and Debbie Salt is the other killer. Who we actually find out her real name is Debbie Loomis. Yes, Billy Loomis' mother. And right there when you find that out, you're like, okay, I know exactly why she's doing what she's doing. And, uh, you know, because uh, Sydney is so shocked when she sees it's Debbie Loomis. She knows immediately it's, it's Debbie Loomis. And I'm like, wait a minute, there's this whole movie with her and, you know, her. They're both in this movie. But going back and watching it, you notice the fact that, you know, her and Debbie were never near each other in this film on purpose. Because Debbie uh, Loomis knew that if Sydney saw her, it would be over with right then and there. So she kept her distance from Sydney. She was hiding from Sydney the whole movie. I'm like, oh, wow. So she never even saw her at all. Uh, so that's cool going back and looking at it. The motive is obviously revenge for Billy's death and, you know, everything that, um, and I like the good old revenge kind of plot. It, it works most of the time, but sometimes it doesn't. I thought it worked fine here, uh, but she was talking to Sydney way, way too long. She, she had a chance to kill her and she really didn't, uh, she didn't, you know, she had plenty of time to do it. Um, <laughs> but yeah, uh, guys, what do I think of, um, Scream 2, like I said. For me, it's on par with the first film. I enjoy 1 and 2 the same. Uh, but that's just me. And I'm going to give Scream 2... I'm, I'm going to give that one an A+. plus Also, uh, like I said, it's on par for me. Scream 1 did some stuff better than Scream 2. But as for pure enjoyment-wise, I, 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 
have as much fun with, with both of them. So, guys, what do you think of Scream 2? And, uh, yeah, comments down at the bottom. You know I live for them. Uh, that's all I can say for today. I'll see you guys in the next video.